Hello, hello, I am Bridget Rowe. I am energy, I am powerful, and I am who I say I am. The purpose of this video is to talk about peer pressures. Peer pressures of life. And the reason why I wanted to talk about the peer pressures of life is because we could allow them to turn us into drifters in life. Drifting away from our path, our path of, path of becoming, drifting away from what we could call following the yellow brick road. You know, following the yellow brick road home to the person that we were always predestined to be, right? And the reason why I want to talk about this is because, <clears throat> is because some people cannot heal if they don't realize that they're a drifter. Some people might not see life outside of being a drifter in that way so basically what i'm saying is if you can't talk about it you can't heal from it so i wanted to break it down on on how i look at it and how i can like sit back and understand it for what it is being that i too am have been on a journey and at one point in my journey i was a drifter so this is not a, dr a judgmental video it's about identifying where you are drifting <laughs> and getting back on course you know and becoming a non-drifter so let me explain first of all the difference between the drifter and the non-drifter the drifter can, can fall by the wayside based upon peer pressures of life you know the drifter is easily swayed Easily swayed and, and probably easily controlled. Meanwhile, there's the non-drifter. And the non-drifter, the difference in the two is the fact that the non-drifter has a mind of their own. <laughs> and they're not afraid to use it. They're not stagnated in the physical reality for things that are not serving them or their purpose, right? And so... They're not pressured into doing things that they don't want to do. <laughs> and so this all really started. It's a pivotal moment when we're children, how this stuff starts off. It could start off by something as simple as you going to church and peer pressured into, you know, picking up a certain religion. It can start by somebody teasing you when you're young with the boogeyman, you know, being afraid of the boogeyman or... <laughs> it can start from somebody pressuring you into drinking or smoking or, you know, having sex before you're really ready, you know, the peer pressures of life. And so all of these things, the commonality that they have is they deprive a person of their will. <clears throat> Excuse me. They deprive the person of their will and their power at a young age, you know, the vulnerable age, you know, when we all get peer pressured. And so you get deprived of your will and your power at that young age. But you could, you could, you could not be or choose to stay a drifter all of your life by, you know, becoming a drifter. You can choose to become one day a non-drifter by simply obtaining a mind of your own. But it becomes a little bit complicated when you're a drifter because you don't know the life outside of drifting. <laughs> That's all you now know, and it feels good now to you. It feels comfortable now. You don't know you're a drifter. You feel like, you know, you just, you just coast and every, all is well. You're just living one day at a time, but you have drifted off. And so I want to give you some examples because at the core of this drifter lies two things, or probably one of the two, depends upon what the thing is for you, lies fear or ignorance, or sometimes fear and ignorance. Because there's nothing in the physical reality that we cannot master if we master self. So let me give you some examples. So when we're young, we might get um, peer pressured into drinking. Well, let's start with cigarettes. Let's start with cigarettes. We get peer pressure into cigarettes, and cigarettes can very well lead to drinking. 
But if there was knowledge in either cigarettes or drinking, the knowledge of the cigarettes would be that it's harmful to you, depleting you of oxygen, you know, in the body, destroying the lungs, you know. You know, people, people who smoke, they, they know these things. Mm -hmm. Then there's the, the maybe the, the drinker who probably used to just smoke, but now because they've lost their will and their power, now they graduate to something else and now they like to drink. Sometimes it go hand in hand, most often they not, it go hand in hand that the, the smoker then becomes the alcoholic, or I won't say alcoholic, the, 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 the casual drink. And so now more oxygen is, you know, because when you drink, you, your oxygen level is being depleted, you're dehydrated. This is why the hangover of your body is, 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 is moving to the rhythm of your heartbeat the next morning because you're so dehydrated, so depleted from your brain being dehydrated. Your liver is suffering, your kidneys are suffering, your testosterone level is decreasing, and your soul, your larger part of you has been stripped away from you because the alcohol is working as astringent to do that. And so many things, on and on and on. But it feels good to do these things. Yeah, you get a little rush from the nicotine, or then you'll get a rush from the alcohol. It feels good to kill yourself sometimes when you're a drifter. Because you have these little endorphins, these little dopamine effects that happen to the body, and it just feels so good. You think maybe that you're following the yellow big brick road on home, and this is this is a good life. Oh, I was tore up. <laughs> and then and then okay, so we got the smoker, we got the drinker, and then 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 that you could we could also drift away with uh with our eating habits. See, that's the kind of drifter I was with the toxic eating habits. You know, because I love that chicken from Popeye. You know, and I, you know that, that that mashed potatoes. That was like my little vegetable. I had to get the jalapeno on, on the side, the jalapeno pepper. You know, two piece spicy white. And I just thought, okay, well, if I ate, I had a good wholesome meal. Or even if it wasn't that, it was maybe the soul food. Not realizing that the soul food was actually killing my soul. But yeah, it tastes good. Yeah, yeah, it tastes good. It made me feel good was good for my organs, you know, was shutting down my body, was building up a lot of mucus inside of me, but it felt good. And then, you know, you get your little Kool-Aid or your little, or your little drink, whatever kind of drink, because at that time in my life, all of my drinks had that high in it, you know, that high fructose corn syrup. And so it felt good to me. That was my way of drifting away, not realizing, you know, I wasn't supposed to be tired all the time. I realized that when I had my favorite meal, when I really cooked, and I cooked my favorite meal, which was the steak and potatoes or maybe some pork chops or whatever, that was really, really heavy, not realizing that I wasn't supposed to be tired like that after I ate, but that's all I knew because I was a drifter in that area of health and wellness, right? And so then we have people that drift to sex, you know, the drifter, because now they have the peer pressure of wanting to have sex early or being promiscuous for validation or, or just because he wants to be king dangling or whatever the, you know, the reason you want to put some numbers on the belt buckle or whatever, you know, the, you know, the drifter. So normally if you pay attention, normally the, the, the smoker graduates to become the drinker and the person that who's drinking and smoking is normally has a high sexual appetite because he's a drifter and all of that drifting stuff kind of like go together, you know, good people, nothing, nothing wrong with being a, a drifter, good fun people, but the drifters, because they don't have that mind or that own, their own, that wheel, that power, because these type things, these type things strips them of their wheel and they become fixed on it. It's almost like they didn't gather soul ties to these things. Like Almost like that toxic relationship. You know that toxic relationship where people beating each other up, talking to each other any kind of way, but nobody don't want to leave the other person. They go, they, they go, they have their fight, you know. But when they have that fight, though, that, those endorphins and, and dopamine effect, that those chemicals feel so good. <laughs> they can't leave. They think that's love. Oh, I love him. He beat me so bad. He talked to me so rough. Hurt me, baby. Hurt me. <laughs> the drifters. 
And so there's a soul connection. There's a connection to these things. And the drifter doesn't realize what healthy love is because all the drifters experienced was what love was not. The drifter don't know nothing about no healthy wellness because all oh, the drifters life they back been hurting, their body been shutting down. If you know, they they their legs been swollen, their ankles always been swollen. They've been back and forth in the hospital. That's normal. It's normal to them. They get a little rough, a little rush with the adrenaline that's released from being in our hospital. So they gotta call everybody in the hospital. Say, I'm up in the hospital. When you come in to see me, <laughs> the drifter. You know, the drift that they wear, their little hospital band for days. Yeah, you know, I was in the hospital. Look, look, look. <laughs> the drifter. And it's and simply all tied to ignorance and, 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 and fear. I'm not being ugly with the drifters. But every last thing that I said, knowledge, a mind of their own, the lack of fear will clear all of the drifters and get them on the side of non-drifters. But let me let me show you how the drifter might not know this stuff. If you observe the drifter in his everyday action, you will see that these things line up. You will see that the cigarette smoker that turns into the cigarette smoker plus the person that does the alcohol is the very person that's always promiscuous. It has that stronger appetite because if they can they can't master that they they really not will ever be able to master you know sexual appetite no no they can't even master what they put in their mouth just yet they're still the drifter and if you pay more attention to the daily the ins and out of the the drifter like let's say for instance the drifter that smokes a cigarette let's say there's two types of um cigarette smokers let's say there's the mechanic cigarette smoker I'm gonna show you how they lose their power and wheel. You probably saw it, but you didn't you, you, you identify it. The mechanic cigarette smoker, and then we have the um, the professional cigarette smoker that go up in the office every day. So they go, so the professional, he goes, he or she goes into the office every day. <clears throat> go, let's say he, he, he's at his desk, he's trying to log in, the computer won't start. This is the drifter that smokes. Because he's lost his power and his will and his creativity, because that's what the cigarette is doing too. <laughs> his ability to smoke, this, I mean, to, to, um, his ability to think, and he's a smoker, this is getting on his nerves, right? <laughs> yeah, it's getting on his nerves. Computer phone will start. So he's gonna call IT and the first thing, while he waiting on IT or somebody to come and help him with the computer issue or whatever is going on in the office, I'm about to go light one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the attention span for that person is so dwindled. That power in that wheel is so long, they don't realize it. Yeah. IT come, whatever, and then now they gotta go talk to somebody else about it. Well, you know, I came in and da 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 and this happened to my computer. Yeah, I'm waiting on I don't know where it is. Hey, I'm going to smoke. <sighs> you know, then they go smoke another one. Gotta have them cigarettes around them. They nerves back. Drifting, and they cannot imagine this is a habit that they have. But the habit is stripping them of will and power and creativity and thought. You know. Meanwhile, the mechanic, the mechanic don't have to go outside. He already outside. So he 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 ponder and try to figure out what's wrong with the car. I don't know, man. Maybe it's da 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 da. Maybe it's such and such. I don't know, I'm see, I'm see. And he's just thinking. And while he's thinking, he cannot finish thinking without a cigarette. Because he's a drifter. And he needs that fix. Both of them need the fix. By the end of the day, the mechanic, we done smoked all those cigarettes that's on the, on the ground, like a good 10 or more. No difference between the worker who's a cigarette smoker that lost its power and its and his will. There's no difference here. All of them lost, both of them lost power, will, creativity, and were smoking all day and didn't realize that there is life outside of being creative-less, <laughs> of lack of creativity of lack of power, a lack of will. There is life outside of
like that, but they were never experiencing right now because they're drifting, is all I'm saying. Just like the person who is not healthy, they, they would never experience right now what it feels like to have a good energetic day where they want to work out. Where they want to do something besides lay down in the bed because you get into that mode when you're a drifter, all you do is drift and fall by the wayside and you lose your will, you lose your power, and you become that which you are not. You see? And so then there's the non-drifter who has a mind of their own, who has a mind of their own and does not allow the peer pressures of life to cause them to be stagnated and to stay drifting away. Because see, all of the drifters have an opportunity to one day decide enough is enough. I don't want to drift anymore. I want to become a non-drifter. Enough is enough. All is mental. I want to master life. Because either I master my life or my life will begin to master me. And that's not going so well. Enough is enough. I don't want to live in fear. Because fear really is ignorance. It's tied to ignorance for the simple fact that if I understood my body, If I understood my issue, I wouldn't be afraid no more. Ooh, interesting. And so all of this starts when we're young. Whether it is devil talk, hell talk, boogeyman talk, smoke a cigarette, eat this here, <laughs> drink this here. This gonna make you feel, feel good. You know, that white gets you right and that brown gets you down. We come up with all of these crazy ways of looking at things. But often than not, if they're causing us to tear up ourselves, they're stemming from ignorance. That should be a sin in the physical reality. That should be the new sin. The sin against God. The new way to look at a sin is if I'm doing something to myself that doesn't make me feel good, it doesn't edify my body, my mental, I have sinned against God. That's, what, that's how we should look at sin, but I mean, but who am I? So it's no judgment here because I once was a drifter. I was a drifter and this is, and I'm also um, very inquisitive and introverted. So because I'm introverted, I pay attention to those things that are outside of me a lot. And so I pay attention to how people interact when they are drifters versus non-drifters in the room. But even when I used to go out, and I wasn't going out as a teenager, you know, I started going out when I was, after I had got a divorce, you know, and just wanted to hang out with friends. And I never really was a, a drinker. But there was a moment in my life where I had to experience the peer pressures of life around people who drunk, and I didn't. And so I would go out, and I remember like it was yesterday, I went out with a group of guy and girlfriends and we were dancing and we were having a great time and one of the guys wanted to buy us rounds, you know, shots. I don't remember what it was in the glass, but I do remember that they had the white salt around the rim of the little shots and they were all lined up. I didn't know nothing about the white salt being toxic salt at that time. I didn't know nothing about no liquor being bad for me because I was a drifter. I didn't know nothing about why it would burn when you drunk it. I didn't care really, just being honest, because I was a drifter. That's why I wanted to talk about this today. So maybe the drifter can maybe use this when they get to the point where they want to become a non-drifter. So anyway, the, the, the drinks were lined up on a bar and we all went over and everybody downed their drink. And I took a sip of mine because I wasn't really a pro. <laughs> I took a sip of mine and I had drunk before, but this particular night when I took that sip, 
it burned my chest so much. It was something strong. I don't remember what it was. It burned my chest. And in my ignorance, when it burned my liver, I didn't even realize it when the liver was right there. I didn't. I thought it was burning my titty. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. Something, something not right right here. Oh, no, that burn, I can't. And they were like, man, come on, you know? Because when you with, when you with drifters, they want you to drift with them. No judgment for my friends. That's just where we was at at that particular time in our life, right? I was like, oh no, I can't do it. I'm, I'm, no, I'm sorry. How much it costs? I'll pay for it. Fuck it. You know, I'm, I'm just not doing it. I'm not doing it, huh? <laughs> and so I'm saying that because the peer pressures of life in, in those type of environments is like this here. Come on. Come on down one with me because what I'm really saying to you is I need this false courage this liquor this alcohol in order to get on the floor and dance I needed to have a good time it is my high I can't bring my high up by myself naturally so I need you to do this too because all of us are doing it. All of us are taking a shot. Now, come on. I'm going to peer pressure you into doing it too with us. Because you're making us feel some kind of way if you're going to be able to do it without your false courage. That's pretty much what the peer pressures of life be trying to tell you. <laughs> so you comply. So you can comply to that. But even in that particular lower point in my life. I was a non-drifter in that area. But every day we have people in the physical reality that are drifters. And the drifters establish soul tides with the thing that they've been drifting away with. Soul tides on something that is destroying the larger part of them, which is their soul purpose in the physical reality. And I really wanted to explain that from how I see it. I wanted to explain that from how I see it. And if, if somebody, while I was drifting away, would have told me, I know me, I don't know other people, would have told me, Bridget, you know, you don't have to feel that uncomfortable every day while here in the physical you could obtain a better quality of health and you could have energy and mental clarity and strength if you did da 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 because see the reason why you're feeling like that is because of this and I just, I just want to break it down to you like this. And then I, Bridget, I could, I could show you. I could show you. I could prove to you once you try living life like this, in this non-toxic way, that you'll feel better. If I had that, I know me. I don't know other people. I would listen to that person. I would have listened to that person because I got to a point where I was afraid that I was going to die. And so we have some drifters in the physical reality that every day they are afraid that they just go really just drift ultimately away and just die. But it's simply because they have the lack of knowledge. It's simply because they don't know what to do at this point. They have that lack of will. So, so I just wanted to break that down that that lack of will, that lack of power can be transformed into will, into power. You think you are powerless when well, you are powerful. You are the high that's higher than your ultimate go-to high in the physical reality. So I really wanted to share how Cigarettes, liquor, fear, 
eating habits, all the things that we are peer pressured about, all those things, how they have one thing in common, well, two things in, in common, that they deprive you of your power and your will. I wanted to share that with you because when we know better, then we're in a, in a position where we can do better. And so in my journey now that I'm a non-drifter, if I can say two things that I feel are the most pivotal things in the physical reality, that once you master these two, you can do anything. You can walk down that yellow brick road and get yourself to higher consciousness, home, heaven, Jesus, God, the Buddha, Buddha, wherever you think that was at the end of the road. You can go down that road with ease. If you can master two things in this physical reality. The first one is mastering what you consume. And that ties to what you eat, you know, the alcohol. Mastering the thing that you put in your mouth. If you can master that, because let me tell you what's happening when you when you when you do that, when you're mastering what you're putting in your mouth, it takes discipline to do that. It takes will to do that. That's 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 the mind over matter. Oh yeah. You own something when you'll be able to do that. And the other thing, if you could master your sexual energy, your sexual appetite, oh, there is nothing that you cannot do. <laughs> there is nothing that you cannot do if you can master those two. All you need to do at that point is sit, is sit back and realize that I am God. That's it. Because those take will, those take power, those take determination, those take mind over matter. Those take a fearless person to overcome. But either you're going to be able to master things in life or you'll be always the drifter. And life will be mastering you. Mastering you in, bro in those broken relationships. Mastering you with that broken health. Mastering you with that broken kidney or liver. Mastering you with that fear of hell, of poverty, of death. Life will blast you. Because that's what life does to the drifters. When life is supposed to be beautiful, when we came forth in physical reality for thrills, chills, and expansion, <laughs> when we came forth to realize, wait, hold on, I am God. I am one of the gods that they spoke about in the biblical text that will come forth, that will rise. And he, I was drifting. <laughs> I was drifting because I didn't know who I was. Whether you decide to be a drifter for a long time or decide to wake up now, all I'm saying to you is, we'll be waiting for you at the end of that yellow brick road. Be blessed.